How can Doctor Who be too PC? How can you have too much PC? I mean, come on. PC is what makes the world go round. PC makes life worth living. And I don't really understand these criticisms because I thought PC left Doctor Who a year ago. How can you have too much Peter Capaldi? Oh, 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 oh. Hello and welcome to the oncoming brainstorm. Today I'm going to be talking about series 11. The last episode of series 11 just finished last Sunday and Jodie's first series is over and so is Chris Chibnall's first series as the showrunner of Doctor Who. Now, I'm not here to feed the negativity of the fan base. Um, I, I'm not here to be overwhelmingly positive either because that's just not how I roll. I want to be honest and as objective about the show as possible. End of the day, this is my opinion, so I can't be purely objective. But, you know, I don't want to feed the bickering and the fighting between the two sides of the fan base. You know, people who think Jodie Whittaker is amazeballs and was the best doctor as soon as she appeared on screen. And I don't want that other side that thinks she's the worst and Chris Chibnall is the worst. And, you know, politics and stuff. I, I'm just not interested in that side. I'm more interested in the storytelling side of Doctor Who. You know, how are the stories going along? And Chris Chibnall has made a lot of big changes to Doctor Who, but in my eyes, a lot of those are superficial. You know, the Doctor is, is a woman, okay. We have three companions, alright. The TARDIS interior has changed, okay. The theme tune has changed, great. Um, but those things don't really affect the ongoing stories. In fact, in Series 11, we have had the most safe, the most dull, and the most just easy stories I've seen in a long time. The only stuff that's really challenged Doctor Who this year is stuff like Rosa with its politics, but, you know, again, that's not... The way it was done is not really my cup of tea, so... Really, what you've had is a very dull and boring series with very little to offer, uh, you know, a long-time fan, really. And I understand Chris Chibnall's trying to appeal to a more general audience, Okay, but sometimes when you try and make something for everyone, you end up making something for no one. And really, I've been extremely disappointed with Series 11. And I am sad to say that The Power of Three from Series 7 is still Chris Chibnall's best Doctor Who episode. This series has just been really dull, and it, it's really lost the charm, the identity, and the levity of that Doctor Who's had in the past. Even in the Stephen Moffat era, when, uh, you know, stuff has been a bit shaky... Uh, and kind of frustrating at times. Moffat always had good ideas, and his stuff was always entertaining. He kept me watching. I've been so bored by this series. There have been a few times where I wanted to turn off the series. It easily is the weakest series of New Who. Uh, and it's not because it's absolutely dreadful. It's painfully dull. Looking on the bright side, the really standout element of the series is the theme tune and the music. Fantastic. I really like the change of composer. Uh, from Murray Gold to Segan Akin Akinola. He's a very talented man, and you can definitely tell for this music. A lot more a atmospheric, more synthy. Definitely what I wanted out of a, a new score for the series, so well done, mate. That's a really welcoming change. And I love the theme tune and the title sequence. Um, you know, that's one of my favourite parts of tuning into Series 11, was seeing the opening theme and the... And that's probably my favourite part. Um, and Bradley Walsh. Oh my god, he really surprised me. A lot of people were shitting on him before he even started the series, saying he was going to be crap. And I can kind of see why. You know, he, he's not really done many dramas except for, like, Law & Order. But goddamn, I love Graham as a companion. He was He felt like the heart at the TARDIS team. He was just really enjoyable and, like, he felt quite warm. And he reminded me a lot of Bernard Cribbins' uh, Wilf. You know, from Series 4 in the Tenant era. Just kind of a warm, grandfatherly feel to him. Brilliant, and I liked his relationship with Ryan. There are three good episodes out of the ten, <laughs> which is embarrassing, but I can't just say all the episodes are bad, because there are three I really enjoyed. Demons of the Punjab, episode six. Really good story. I like the twist that it wasn't the alien witnesses or slash assassins that were the villains, who did look pretty cool. It was the brother Manish, 
you know, his prejudice against uh, that particular relig religion was foreshadowed early on in the episode, and it became the, the pure antagonist of the story, and I thought that was a really refreshing change. I did not see it coming, and I love that. And I like that it's centred around a piece of history that's not really tapped in much through TV and media from what I know of. And I didn't really know anything about the partition in India and Pakistan during, you know, uh, after the World War II. I thought that was super interesting. So do, do more stuff like that, please. Then we go on to The Witch Finders, which is episode 8. That's probably my favourite of the series because I felt like it had the kind of the charm and the fun and the silliness and the camp factor that was kind of lacking in the earlier episodes. It felt like something that could have been in the Capaldi era or the uh, in the Matt Smith era. Very fun, quite light. There were actual alien villains for once, the Morax. I know they're not the best ever, but I feel like they could have fitted in the Tenant era or something. Uh, they remind me a bit of the Gelf, you know, taking over dead bodies. Kind of evil, sentient mud. That's so Doctor Who and silly. Uh, that I enjoyed that. And King James. Oh, great character. A lot of fun. And... There wasn't really any kind of politics or underlying, like, you know, you could say, quote-unquote, politically correct messages. It was just a fun bit of escapist TV, which is what I want out of Doctor Who. Then we move on to episode 9, It Takes You Away. Now, this episode is a bit strange, a bit controversial. I actually really enjoy it as a story, and I know the idea of a sentient frog universe is a bit ridiculous, but come on, it's Doctor Who. I quite liked it. CGI aside of the frog, or whatever it was, if it was makeup or... Or special effects I still think the, uh, the idea of it was fun and weird a bit abstract a bit big finishy which is why I liked it now the weakest episodes of the series were definitely Rosa I did not enjoy Rosa I know a lot of people really love it think it's great fair enough that's your opinion I'm not here to try and change how you feel if you like that episode if you like the series that's great all the power to you but I'm here to say look this is what I thought this is my perspective and I really felt that the message behind Rosa, it was was portrayed in a very preachy, um, a very patronising way. Look, I know racism is bad. I know it's bad. It sucks. Just don't throw it in my face. And I don't know if Doctor Who is the time and place to tell such a heavy story with that. And if they were going to, they really should have gone for it. I just feel they only kind of dipped their toe in it. They didn't really go for it. Um, and it just came across as a bit flat to me. And Cresco, Jesus, the, the space racist who looked like he just walked off the set of Coronation Street or The Only Way is Essex, like, goddamn. One of the worst Doctor Who villains ever. He's not even explained, like, why he's a racist. I know we have this idea that, that racism is going to be a thing in the future, but I, I don't like that. I thought that's kind of a, a dark, not a nice message for young families and, and you know, kids and stuff. I don't think that's... It just didn't feel very Doctor Who, uh, and for something doing, it just felt a bit too different, a bit too out there for Doctor Who, and I just didn't know if it was the time and place, and for me, you'll be able to tell that I come to Doctor Who for escapism, for the entertainment value, I don't come there for heavy politics, uh, and we have a lot of this kind of stuff um, going around in the news in our everyday lives, so I think it's nice that sometimes it's a comfort in Doctor Who to have something a bit fantastical, a bit weird, a bit out there and even if it does reflect politics it doesn't do it um, in an explicit manner, it does it more in an implicit manner. So for example people think that the Daleks and Davros are a metaphor for the Nazis and Hitler and if you want that reading, if you want to understand the Daleks and Davros as that, you can. But there's also another thing there where the Daleks and Davros can stand on their own. And as a kid, I wasn't thinking, oh, the Daleks are space Nazis. I was just thinking, they're Daleks, exterminate, you know? And I like it when Doctor Who does that. So if they were to play into the ideas of racism, I feel like it would have been smarter to do to give it a sci-fi twist. And that's one thing about this series. There's been a lacking uh, of, just a, a lack of general sci-fi ideas, except for like maybe the strange universe and it takes you away. The, the sci-fi has been very bog standard and and just a bit bland, honestly. Episode 4, Arachnids in the UK, was just piss poor, honestly, it was kind of bad. I like the CGI of the spiders, but the story behind it was just a bit all over the place. You had literally Donald Trump as the villain. He was, this guy was pretty much a Saturday morning cartoon. I was pissing myself watching this episode because he was just so 
over the top and hammy and you know America you know it is just it was bad um, the spiders how Jody just leaves them to suffocate in a room just what and the resolution is just Donald Trump pulling out a gun and shooting them and one minute they're ki and the spiders are killing innocent people and then the next we're meant to feel sorry for them just just no that episode was just 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 no <laughs> my opinion has changed from that one I used to think it was all right now I just think it's definitively bad and then we also have the Sununja Conundrum. Jesus, I think this might be the weakest episode of the series. It was really boring, really bland. And the one good thing it had going for it was the Bating on this alien spaceship. The setting could have been cool, and the Bating, it was actually kind of interesting. This kind of small, little, tiny, cute alien that was really dangerous. Awesome. But it spends like most of the runtime off screen. Come on! And the characters are just walking around on the ship, just talking about stuff. You know, and there's a whole, like, five-minute scene of Ryan talk talking to Yaz about, you know, how do you feel, Ryan? How do you feel about your dead mom and your dad leaving you? And it's like, well, this is this could be nice, but we've literally just had the scene before of the Bating is going to destroy the spaceship. Come on, a bit of urgency, please. That's what I think Chibnall's episodes really lack, just a sense of pacing and drip-feeding information. Characters will just be standing around talking, 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 and it gets really dull. And after a while, for me, it becomes white noise. His villains lack that sense of urgency to push the narrative forwards and really give us something to be scared of or worried by an actual threat. And for me, in Doctor Who, what I really like, you know, there's two boxes you can tick for me. One box is a good, a good fun adventure, you know, a sense of we're traveling around time and space. The other box is a good villain, a great threat. So if you don't tick either of those, I'm checking my watch, you know, I'm bored. And Chibnall very rarely checks either of those. You know, characters just stand around and talk, you know, the adventure is lacking, and then the villains aren't really threatening, so the villains are lacking. I also felt that the finale was really weak and underwhelming, not terrible, just really bland. And I, I don't like weak finales, it's like one of my pet peeves of TV, it's like, you know, if you're gonna go out and you know you're not going to be back for a while with the series go out with a bang give us something to remember and i even felt you know i'm not i don't know, i know like everyone doesn't love series 10 i really love the series 10 finale i think the doctor falls feels epic emotional and it left me wanting more series 11 just left me cold and disappointed after uh, what was it the battle of ranscor avcolis right chibnall you need to come up with better names because that is just crap um, and a mouthful at best. Yeah, I just felt this episode really lacked any sense of danger. Uh, it starts off quite promising with the Ux and the idea of Tim Shaw coming back and then killing a kid, which I thought that was, that was quite brave and ballsy. But then after that, the episode just falls flat. I didn't enjoy the bit where the Doctor was being preachy against uh, Graham about using guns. I know the Doctor doesn't like violence, and obviously she doesn't want to uh, like condone and allow... Graham to kill someone, but I felt like the Doctor was a bit hypocritical and smug about it, like saying, oh, you can't travel with me if you kill Tim Shaw. I'm like, Tim Shaw has killed loads of people, you know, and, like, I don't blame Graham being angry at them. So, I just felt there was a lack of empathy there for, for th the 13th Doctor, for Jodie's Doctor to be sort of the more human, bubbly, and empathetic, uh, empathetic Doctor. That moment felt quite cold and callous, and I was like, come on, like, that was just a bit unfair on Graham. I get it. But, like, Doctor, you know, you've killed a lot of people. And even in one of Chibnall's episodes, Dinosaurs on a Spaceship, Matt Smith left um, Solomon to just blow up with these miss missiles firing him. Like, you've killed lots of people, Doctor. Like, come on, you should be able to get it. You should understand that Graham's burning with revenge. That really bothered me. Tim Shaw, he's pathetic. He doesn't do anything in the episode. He's somehow more useless than he was in the first episode. I like that he killed people in the first episode. Uh, but in this finale, he just stood there and made, you know, just went Rah! at the end, and then <laughs> Graham just shoots him in the kneecap, and they shoot him away, and he he doesn't even fight against Graham and Ryan when he's in that prison. Just ah, oh, so lame, really lame stories. And again, Yaz didn't didn't get to do anything. He was just really dull, and I didn't like that the thirteenth Doctor didn't get that moment to fight Tim Shaw. It was just. 
Yeah, a really disappointing finale. With the 13th Doctor, I, I have enjoyed Jodie's performance at moments. I just don't like the way the character's been written. She's quite... The 13th Doctor is quite bland at moments. Um, she feels quite beige, you know. She's just kind of a more fun and bubbly Matt Smith or David Tennant. And while that's been charming, and I can understand that's probably a good way to bring on new audiences, uh, at times I feel like her Doctor kind of lacks teeth or lacks uh, that kind of authority figure. And that's not because she's a woman, don't throw that out there, that's just stupid. No, it's because the way she's been written is that sometimes she comes off as a little passive in her episode, she's not active. Um, you know, in stuff like Rose and Demons of the Punjab, she has to be uh, passive to the events, you know, she isn't being the hero that I think she they need to let her be in the next series. So that was really disappointing. And yeah, I just feel like I don't know, with Jodie's performance, because she is quite bubbly and warm and empathetic, sometimes she hasn't had those moments where you really believe she's a, you know, 2,000-year-old alien, you know, the oncoming storm. Uh, that's what I like about the Doctor, like him to have the sense of threat and authority to them, you know. that I think we've been spoilt with Capaldi, because he does that so damn well. Yaz didn't really do anything in this series, you know, despite being a police officer, she never really got the chance to really shine. And she just feels like a third wheel, so or a fourth wheel. <laughs> so I think really cut down the companions for next series. Ryan was all right. He had some good moments. Uh, and the best part about that character, I think, is his dyspraxia and the relationship with Graham. So overall, I've really not enjoyed series eleven, and I think the fact that it has very little like redeeming qualities for me and stuff that really makes me want to come back to Doctor Who. Unless stuff dramatically improves for series 12, which we're not getting until 2020, which is a long ass time, I'm really not interested, you know, I, I didn't feel compelled to come to the microphone and talk about each episode week in, week out, because it just really left me kind of bored, honestly, and disappointed. And it's not like an angry, pissed off like it was with Moffat, it's more sad and kind of just like, oh, is that it? Is, is that really it for series 11? Really, things that I would do to improve the series, I think there, there needs to be some sort of story arc. There is a lacking of any kind of ongoing narrative except for like Tim Short coming back and maybe Ryan and Graham's relationship. But I like the idea of an alien threat being the story arc. That's a lot more interesting, so bring that in. A complete lack of any kind of classical returning villains was very disappointing. I just think you could have had one villain. It didn't need to be the Daleks or the Cybermen or the Master. It could have been the Sycorax. It could have been the Ice Warriors. The Silorians. Chibnall likes the Silorians. Why don't we get that? Just at least one returning villain to remind us that this is Doctor Who. Because it really felt like there was so much change. Uh, and there was, sometimes it was lacking that kind of familiarity that sometimes a returning villain can bring. And honestly, I just think Chris Chibnall needs to write more interesting stories, because I was checking my watch, like I said, a lot of times during these episodes. I was The episodes were really dragged. Because I have been so underwhelmed with this series of Doctor Who, I'm not really interested in series 12, unless I see a positive reception or like an increase, uh, or any like maybe Daleks or any returning villains, I will come out, I will come back to the series in curiosity, but honestly, uh, I don't like Chris Chibnall's version of Doctor Who. Unless things change, I don't think I'm going to watch it. <laughs> Unless there is a Dalek in the New Year special, which I think there might be, because the trailer was really hinting it. I just, I've got no interest going forward in, in this, in the modern series of Doctor Who. I definitely want to keep talking about Doctor Who on the channel, uh, and mainly through Classic Who, which I'll be getting into, watching all the classic stories. I've been really enjoying that. And I've been listening to a lot of Big Finish audio plays, and I would love to talk about those. So, there will be Doc 2 stuff on this channel in the future, um, and also other TV shows, but I don't think I'm really going to cover any Doctor Who uh, of, of the modern series, unless there is big changes like Jodie leaving or Chris Chibnall leaving. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I've left very lukewarm and unsatisfied with series 11. <laughs> so what are your thoughts everyone? I want to know what you think and at the end of the day if you enjoyed the series that's great. Let me know, tell me why and if you didn't like the series, if you hated series 11 let me know too. I'm really interested and um, what do you want to see in Doctor Who going forward? What, what kind of big changes do you think the show needs? Because I think it needs a big shake up in terms of storytelling and narrative. So thanks for watching everyone. Um, take care and keep watching and subscribe and all that good stuff. 
lovely jubbly, take care, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Goodbye.